All this week, KIMT News 3 reporters are looking back at September 11, 2001. Now, I'm older than my colleagues and was a working reporter in Philadelphia at the time of the attacks. I was on vacation in North Carolina and was watching the network news as first one and then two jets crashed into the World Trade Center towers on that clear, brilliantly blue late summer morning. Within a matter of hours, I had packed up in North Carolina and was on my way to the Pentagon. A full day had passed by the time this reporter arrived at the Pentagon. Smoke still billowing from the monolithic structure I had always held on to as a symbol of American strength and invincibility. I remember the distinct smell of kerosene, which was in fact jet fuel. You had basically every type of emergency vehicle and the sirens from that. And then on top of that, just a really acrid smell from the burning jet fuel. And to be honest, most of my memories are a little bit fragmented because I was only three years old at the time. When I saw Second Lieutenant Hannah Bourne interviewed about her memories, I was surprised by how similar they were to my own. She and her baby sister Heather were inside the Pentagon daycare center during the attack. A service members showed up at the door and started loading infants into cribs and then just carried the cribs like half a mile to the river. Her mother, now retired Brigadier General Dana Bourne, was serving at Bowling Air Force Base. You know, our world changed. And it took us a while to realize that, I think, after 9-11, that there's no going back, right, that, that things have changed. We all changed. We reporters knew it as we did countless live reports with the burning Pentagon as a backdrop. Three-year-old Hannah drew pictures of what she experienced following the attack and instinctively comforted her sister when her dad brought her to a spot near the Pentagon to explain what happened. Her younger sister, who at four months old really was, was just dealing with, you know, sadness. Who knows where that came from, but she was comforting. The Bourne sisters are both in the military now. Lieutenant Bourne with the Air Force, midshipman Heather Bourne at the Naval Academy. The biggest takeaways that my sister and I have had have just been from witnessing firsthand how people show up every day and commit themselves to a larger purpose and, and do what the nation asks of them, but also do so much more. Lieutenant Bourne says each September she and her sister reflect on what they can do to honor those who died and the sacrifices made over the past two decades. I've met a lot of service personnel over the years who made the decision to serve following September 11th. None of them, though, as young as the Bourne sister. It's, it's interesting how a three-year-old child and a grown man both remember what Lieutenant Bourne described as that, that acrid smell, Katie. Yeah, I know. Last week already when we were talking about doing these stories, you had mentioned that. You said the smells and you felt like you, you felt like you were back there. You could just envision being there. Yeah. You know, you've often mentioned how the country really seemed to pull together following September 11th. Yeah, I, I remember. What I don't remember is whether I actually did interviews or whether we were just walking by the Capitol. I remember seeing uh, Senator John McCain, a Republican, and Senator Joe Biden, a Democrat, walking together in front of the Capitol. And I remember Senator McCain actually taking me by the arm when I guess he thought I was in some distress. He said, we're going to be okay. We've got a good man in the White House. And then I remember that man, George W. Bush, throwing out the first pitch at Yankee Stadium. And that kind of brought us together following 9-11. Certainly a sense of unity. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, George.